welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-26. Our last episode pitted the party against a gas spore and a grell. The party discovered a magical hairbrush that grooms the head when the word clef is uttered. The discovery led to the near-death experience of Cave the Bard, who was saved with a random potion by the mage. We return to the heroes as Lady Irena is nursing a swollen eye that occurred as Cabe came out of his paralyzed state. Ah, uh, no, really, it's, uh, it's uh, barely noticeable, replied the bard as Lady Irena asked him about her appearance. She seemed less than convinced, especially since she could feel the swelling pulsing. The others were tossing the room and checking for more valuables when Welby came in from an adjacent chamber. You guys are going to want to see this and... Whoa, that looks painful. Lady Arena glared at Cabe Silvertongue, who sheepishly shrugged his shoulders. The party filed out of the chamber and down a short hallway. Entering the next room, the party quickly noticed that it had the trappings of a chapel dedicated to an unknown deity. Fargus asked Sister Elaine if she was familiar, but she shook her head and pointed out that it was too old for her to know. Okay, big deal, a chapel spouted Lady Arena to the halfling. So what? Crestfallen at the lack of faith in him, he stepped over to the broken altar where a dust-covered cloth was hiding something. This is what I brought you here for. Ta-da! He exclaimed and pulled the cloth off. A human skull adorned in gold plating sat atop the altar. See how pretty it is? The group leaned in and then witnessed the empty eye sockets begin to glow red. Cabe and Irena tackled their associates as the glowing eyes shot a fireball out of the skull's nasal cavity. The blast filled the chamber with smoke and dust and dislodged a portion of the wall in the room. A heavy timber fell, narrowly missing Sister Elaine, who rolled away just in the nick of time. The PCs took cover and waited for the dust to settle. Fargus Stoutheart peeked up first. He noted that the skull was now enclosed in a pale blue light. Picking up a large rock, he heaved it at the human remains, but watched as it bounced off the glittering illumination. It cast a protective field on itself, yelled out the elven mage as she dared to look. The others each took turns looking at the strange item from their own vantage points. Welby yelled out that he was going to jump over it and get behind it. The cleric and bard yelled no, but it was too late. In a feat of acrobatic prowess, the rogue hurled his small frame over the altar, landing behind the skull. As he reached out to grab the item, a faint glowing hand appeared and knocked a statue off the ridge along the ceiling line. Looking up, Welby observed the statue fall, but he could not escape the plummeting rock. The statue struck the halfling and knocked him out, pinning him to the ground. Cabe popped up his head too long and was blasted backwards by a magic missile. A second shot fell through the air and dropped striking Lady Irena. The pair cried out in anguish, but advised that they were still fine. Fargus called out to Sister Elaine to cause a distraction. Taking a piece of debris from the floor, the cleric sent a swatch of cloth into the air. The glowing hand plucked the cloth out of midair and then released it, letting it fall gracefully down. After the distraction, Fargus leaped from his concealed position and swung his blade over his head. His strength sent the blade through the protective blue barrier and collided with the skull, but only cracking it. A flaming sphere shot out of the skull's mouth and headed right for the ranger, who quickly dove behind more debris. The sphere hovered, then dove straight for the prone warrior, who raised his hand ahead of the impact. As he watched helplessly, a blue barrier spread in front of him and the orb impacted it, skittering off at a weird angle. As it returned in an oval arch, the ranger braced himself again. The fire sphere impacted the warrior but blinked out of existence quickly. 
The smell of burnt flesh filled the air, and Lady Irene yelled out to him. I'm... I'm okay, I think. Oh, but it hurts. Fargus rose holding his burnt forearm. Looking to his assailant, he noticed that the skull was nowhere to be seen. Cabe, Silvertongue, rose from behind the altar, holding the severed two pieces of the shattered skull. It's safe, he concluded. What just happened? questioned the ranger, after lifting the stone off a groggy halfling. Sister Elaine responded, explaining that she had cast Shield of Faith on the warrior, and that knocked the orb off its path briefly. Just as it careened around and struck you, Cabe shattered it after Irena had frozen it like she did with the skeletons. A queasy Welby threw up all over the floor and addressed the group. Holy shit, when did you guys all get here? He asked his party mates, who looked at each other and listened, as Welby counted off three times the amount of members they had before falling over. Lady Irena laid hands on the diminutive member of the party and healed him. Can we rest? asked the rogue, and the others nodded. I think we've all earned a rest, pointed out Lady Irena. Let's just secure this room and we can search it. The doors were in poor but acceptable shape, and they were locked from the inside. Each party member cleaned off an area to rest, and an additional torch was lit to provide illumination. Fargus wrapped his forearm and then searched the room. In checking the altar, he found a loose stone and pulled forth a rectangular metal box. Inside, he found eleven gold ingots worth about ten crowns apiece and a slender teakwood wand. The item was handed over to Lady Irena, who could not identify the instrument. She then handed it over to Sister Elaine, who gained a smile on her face. She held up the wand and pointed. You see this mark right here? That's Dilo. I know what this does, she proudly exclaimed. She asked Fargus how his arm was, and he pointed out that it was okay. Not convinced, she had him take a knee. The group watched as she waved the fine twig around and uttered some magical words. Blue flame leapt from the tip of the wand and struck the ranger in the arm like a lightning bolt. The group dropped back, fearing that the cleric had just killed him. Jumping to his feet, the ranger began to slap at his arm, thinking it was on fire, but stopped when he realized he was uninjured. Gasps escaped the party members when they observed the ranger's arm was as good as new. They looked at the smiling cleric, who simply said, Wand of healing! Praise Dilo! The ranger admired his fully armed, fully healed arm and repeated her praise. Praise Dilo indeed! With their position secured, the group sat down for a few hours to rest and catch their breath while they wrapped their wounds. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.